Okay, in this fifth video, we're going to actually be extracting data from our database. Um, what we've got here is the session two document, and what we're now going to be looking at is looking to our session. Now, notice the change here is that I've got contact book and contact book. They look the same, except the session three seems to have Mr. Donald Duck involved. And that's because what's happening here is this one is static and this one is taking the data from the database. So what we're going to be looking at this vi this video is looking at taking data from the database. Let's have a look back at session two and here's the page. If you remember in session two we were looking at our first set of commands for PHP, beginning PHP and end PHP, and then how to connect to the database. Now all we did was connect to the database. The rest of the document was all standard HTML and there's the data relating to Mr. Mickey Mouse. So all that stayed the same. Okay. Now we're going to session number three within uh, HT Docs. And if we have a look, this is the index for uh, session three, as it says up there. If I swap to session two, we can see that actually there doesn't seem to be any difference between these two documents at all. And there, there isn't until we go down to here and we can see Mickey Mouse. But well, session three looks like this. So there's a telephone number, the table headings, and the table row. So all this is as it was before. But from this table row onwards, until this end table, we've got a whole load of PHP. So end TR, and then the next piece of actual HTML is end. So we've got this part here, and we've got this part here, but this bit in the middle has completely changed. Whereas it's static here on session two, which I'm now going to just close down, session three has a whole load of PHP. Notice again, we let HTML start from our last dot part, so there's our connecting the database, told it stop the PHP, and here is the HTML. And then we come down to here, we say, oh, hold on, there's a bit more PHP. So because we've saved this file as index.php, as you can see up here, we can tell that uh, the system then knows that there may be some PHP in the document, and when it sees this tag here, it knows that this it now has to execute something. Your server has to do something before it can hand the web page over to the user. The first thing I've done is I've set up three variables. The first one is called dollar $Query. I don't have to call it dollar $Query, but I know that this is the query I wish to execute, and therefore I've called it Query because it means something to me. A query in database terms is a question, and I'm going to ask the system a question, and this is called a select query. So within the speech marks, there's a semicolon, so this is my query that I'm going to put into here. Uh, if you do programming, you'll recognize this is a simple string. Nothing happens here. All that gets put into dollar $Query is this set of letters, symbols, and spaces. It's just the same as putting the words hello world there. It's the next step that makes the difference between hello world and this being a select query. Let's just have a take a moment to look at this query. What it's saying is select everything from tbl underscore contacts. Now if you remember we created a table in our contacts da database called tbl contacts and this is saying get everything from there take every single record now we put two in there Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck so take all of those from there that's what this is saying that's what the star means all everything select everything from TBL contacts you don't have to capitalize the keywords but you should get into the habit of it it's good programming sense these are key terms as regards my SQL uh, this is my SQL by the way in the center here so we're already writing on the first bit of my SQL and they, these are key words, so highlighting them knows that you you know you've got it right. Everything else in lowercase. 
So as I said, this is just the same as I might as well still store there, doggy doggy doo doo, or whatever else. It doesn't really matter what I store in here until this next line. Notice that this variable called contacts dollar contacts has stored into it not just the dollar query, but actually something that's performed on there. My SQL query with the two brackets. This runs whatever is stored in that variable. I could have put all of this inside those brackets. I'm not worried about this variable here, but there are test purposes why this is actually really useful. Don't worry about that. Moment. We may get a chance to look at that later on, or you may start to realize that you can send this to the screen and see that your query is actually correct. But once you know it is, this is the query. It takes this string of commands here and it runs it it executes it and puts the results so whereas this is simply text saying saying whatever it says this then understands that that is saying select everything from tbl contacts it goes off it takes everything from tbl contacts and it stores it as a record set within dollar contacts so this now this new variable now holds all of that data from our database. The next variable is total contacts, and this uses another uh, PHP instruction, which is MySQL num rows. Now, MySQL appears at the front. That tells you it's a uh, SQL uh, that is running a SQL command. The first one was query, so MySQL run a question. What's the question? It's in the brackets. Here is saying MySQL num rows, which actually means number of rows, and there's the results. And what it's choosing is how many rows of data are there in there. Well, we had Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, so there were two rows. So it's going to count to two. This is this one's going to come back and say two. Now we come to here, and this is a bit of fun coding here. Um, this is a bit sloppy here. I should have sorted that out. That should be back there. But this is a for statement. And a for is a, uh, in programming terms, you may come across something called a for next loop. This is the same thing. It's a loop. It will go through from this bracket to this bracket as many times as you tell it to. And what I've told it to do is I've told it to set a new variable, $i. And I've told it to set this to zero. I've then said, carry on th carrying through this loop until whilst $i is less than the total number of contacts. So it will go from zero to one, and then it will go to two. And because that rule wouldn't be true, dollar i would not be less than it will be the same as total contacts the loop would stop and it will go on to the next command so it's going to go through this twice how do i know it's going to go from zero to one to two because this last part simply means increment whatever's in dollar i by one that's all that means notice the brackets around it and then i've got curly brackets there and here so it's saying go from $i equals zero to $i is less than, whilst $i is less than total contacts, incremented by one, go through this set of instructions in the curly brackets as many times needed. So if I have 200 contacts, it's going to go through this loop 200 times. So what happens in this loop? Well, in this loop here, I've got a whole set of variables, but notice actually they're the same commands. MySQL result is the same command being used all the time. They all have the name of the results, the dollar contacts that's there. So they all have that dollar contacts there to there. So take what this is saying is get the result, look at the data, use the record number. Well, notice that the first one will be zero, and the thought will be, hold on, surely record, the first record is one. In databases, the first record in any series, ignore the ID, ignore the primary key. From a counting point of view, databases start from zero. So your first record is always record zero. So this will go, go to the contacts, take record zero, and in this case, remember the field contact ID, get the contact ID and store 
that records contact ID into this variable and I called it dollar ID I could have called it dollar duck it doesn't really make any difference but I like to have names that mean something this one says take the same set of data take the same record as you've taken from here whatever dollar I is take the variable take the field name store a title and store it in this title here do the same thing with first name to first last name to last telephone number to telephone so whereas this is taking the data from the database so remember connect to the database management system connect to the database select all the data from this table find out how much data is in that table now go through that data each time taking each field and storing the result of that field into a new variable then we go down to here and we've got three lines of command and these are echo commands and these are probably the simplest of all PHP commands and they just simply mean put whatever take whatever you've done and send it out as whatever you want just just simply send this out um, to the HTML and what I've put in the socks is HTML so this will become standard HTML but notice it is important I've used speech marks and I've then used the variable names in here marks are very important if you use quotation marks and you will see people all over the web using quotation marks this will not work this will fail I'll show you how in a second what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to quote marks save that load Oh, not that one, that's who. And interestingly enough, that hasn't failed at all. And what have I done wrong there? Oh, that's because there are no fields in there. That was a rather stupid thing to have done. You'll notice in this case, I've just changed that to quote marks, and I looked a complete idiot because nothing changed. That's because the only thing in there is purely html it's this part I should have changed I didn't want to change this initial line but of course that deals with all these see the dollar telephone dollar last dollar first dollar title save that go back to here so they became these records here but if I now reload this page You'll notice that because I've changed the quotes, it's re it's sent it out exactly as it appeared in the code. So it's actually sent this out as HTML exactly. It hasn't done anything with the dollar title, the dollar first. It hasn't recognised that these have any relationship to these variables up here. But if I change those back to speech marks, you can see it's now operated so quote marks will send the, the HTML within them just exactly as it appears no change speech marks will look for variables and will change them into variables so when it sees a dollar title the first time it comes around it takes the title stra title and what it's doing record zero which was mister so it's with mister this takes the first record which was Mickey puts that into dollar first and so shows here Mickey this becomes mouse and this becomes Mickey Mouse's telephone number it then comes around to here and all I've got here is a little bit of code that simply says edit and delete we're not doing anything with edit and delete at the moment but I need those in here because it's all part of this loop I don't have to have it as PHP but to be honest it's quite simple and easy and the echoes work here so it gets to the end of here, we'll go back round, it will then take the next record, record number one. So the title then is still Mr. 
but the first name will be Donald and the next name will be Duck. So it gets to this line, Mr. Donald Duck and puts Mr. Donald Duck's telephone number up. It then comes around to here. It then goes back. It increments to record number th uh, two. It says, sorry, uh, changes dollar i to two. Two is le is equal to. It's not less than. It's equal to the two records here. So it then goes back to down to this line. Ignores all this code. Goes to this line, and this line simply puts up the total number of contacts. And I actually use here the total contacts from there to tell us how many contacts we've got in total. Now just put the HTML either side, everything else is HTML. This is a bit of CSS to make things small, but you saw that in the first part. And I end the PHP. So echo is the simplest bit of coding. You may be wondering about the tabbing in. The tabbing in has no importance for the computer. You don't have to tab in, but hopefully you can see it's easier to see everything if it is tabbed in. Everything else after that is exactly the same as it was before, so there's no change. If we go back to our system, you can see that everything's there. Total number of contacts is two. Where did that two come from? It came from there, and that's how many rows of data we had, and therefore it's put it in there. Simple and easy. We haven't done anything else to this system at all. For from here, you realize how to extract data from a database extracting all data from the system. You may be asking yourself, but you've done nothing with this. We haven't yet. We will do later on, but it's not something we want the user to see. So I don't let the user see the ID, but it exists, so I can use it for something else. We'll see that in a later video, but for now, there's a hell of a lot to be getting on with. Make sure it works before you pump.